This is the truth about Polygon. Today, we're going to investigate whether Ethereum 2.0 will wipe out Polygon, and will we invest in it? Welcome to The Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto. From beginner tips to expert picks, use this as fuel for your investing journey. Because when you're in the know, your money will grow. The Beam Pod is presented by Dowmaker, the top crypto launchpad in the industry. Dowmaker allows people to participate in top crypto projects before they launch and generate some of the best returns you can find anywhere. They also provide growth solutions for crypto projects that are looking for funding and assistance with marketing. With their revolutionary new public strongholder offerings, everyone can get early access to top crypto projects regardless of their net worth. Dowmaker is rapidly disrupting the venture capital industry. If you're interested, head over to dowmaker.com to learn more. This episode of The Beam Pod is sponsored by KyberSwap. KyberSwap is a DEX and DEX aggregator, which is built to facilitate all your DeFi needs in one single platform. Fast, cheap, and safe. User experience is KyberSwap's sole focus to make everyone's life better in DeFi. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. And this is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today, we're going to tell you the truth about Polygon Matic. Ethereum 2.0 merge is coming up. Will it wipe out Polygon? Does Polygon have a future? Let's dive in. There's, there's a huge, you know, it's a huge talking point with now the Ethereum merge is now supposed to be happening either later this summer, say August, September. I could see it happening as late as October or, or later. But now everyone's thinking, will the Ethereum 2.0 merge and shift from proof of work to proof of stake wipe out all layer twos in crypto that are based on Ethereum? Because it's going to solve the problems that they're trying to solve, right? Yeah. So Polygon Matic is a layer two, meaning it's built on top of Ethereum to help Ethereum scale. It, it solves a lot of the problems that Ethereum has. You know, when NFTs were booming, there was a lot of congestion in the network. So it was slowing it down. There was high gas fees. What Polygon is, is it runs parallel to Ethereum and helps with all those. It helps with the scalability. It solves all of Ethereum's problems. So when we talk about Ethereum 2.0, we're talking about Ethereum making an upgrade that is going to allow it to be faster, be cheaper. So then what's the need for Polygon? Right. So, you know, if you're like anyone in crypto and you use NFTs, you use Ethereum on a daily or weekly basis, you know the main problems. Gas fees can be incredibly high. You know, back at the height of the bull run, we're talking $100, $150 for a transaction. For an NFT, that might be worth less than that. You know, it's ridiculous. Plus, transaction speeds can get pretty congested and slow at times. You know, if I want to send you some Ethereum, it might take 15, 20 minutes. And that is not a good feeling when you're wondering where your Ethereum is, that I sent it to the wrong wallet address. So these are big problems on what should be basically the most popular network in crypto. So let's go back to the start. Polygon was formed, was founded in 2017. Uh, it's an Indian blockchain platform, right? Previously known as Matic. So most of the OG crypto heads know it as Matic. They switched to Polygon fairly recently. It's currently the number 17th ranked project. It has a market cap of around $6 billion and 80% of tokens are currently in circulation, which if you watched our tokenomics episode, you would know is a pretty good ratio, right? But going back to the core, the core solution that Polygon is, is they're trying to solve these main issues of Ethereum. But I think what we have to do in this episode is dive into exactly what's going to happen. How fast will <coughs> Ethereum 2.0 get? Does Polygon have a future or is now a time to short Polygon because with the merge coming, their solution is no longer needed, right? It's kind of, it, 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 deserves, it deserves some research. So make sure you watch to the end of this episode. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, right? So Ethereum 2.0 is going to be introducing sharding, uh, which helps improve the scalability and the network throughput of Ethereum. But what happens is, <clears throat> it was interesting. So I saw that there was going to be 64 chains. I said, so the sharding is going to increase the throughput times 64, but Vitalik Buterin sees Ethereum usage doing 100x. So it's still going to outpace with, so once Ethereum, once it, once Ethereum moves to Ethereum 2.0, goes to proof of stake, right? Right. This is going to bring on a ton of institutional adoption. So we're going to see still a ton of usage. And I don't know if the sharding with how much 
how many people are going to be moving to this uh, platform or this blockchain, it's still going to require the use of Polygon uh, to ensure that Ethereum is still successful. Right. So if you, if you think about Ethereum right now, even if Ethereum 2.0 brings gas fees down from, say, right now, I don't know, they're probably low because we're in a you know bear market, so to speak. Um, they're probably at, I don't know, $5, 10 20 $30.00 down from $100 is great. But Polygon gas fees, as we know, because, you know, I've done a bit of NFTs on Polygon, they're basically zero, you know, 0. 0.001 cent, less than that. And the transactions are immediate. One of the good examples of an NFT on Polygon that I've used on OpenSea is Zed Run, the most popular virtual metaverse horse racing game. You know, their NFTs are on Polygon. They were one of the first big NFT collections to mint on Polygon, and I've used it. So I know how fast and easy it is. And that's a huge advantage. So when we're looking at if the future of Polygon is secure or whether the E2.0 merge will wipe it out, I think what we should be looking at is their partnerships, the projects that are building using Polygon, and will those partners leave once E2.0 comes or will they remain? So we've already seen, as I, as I mentioned, Zed runs on Polygon. There's a ton of play-to-earn games that are building on Polygon because when you think about it, if you need instant transactions and millions of transactions per hour in a video game, you know, where every battle, every movement, every, everything is a transaction, you can't use Ethereum, even if it is Ethereum 2.0, because you can't be charging a dollar per transaction in a play to earn game. Yeah, it still needs to be at like that point zero zero zero. Exactly. So right away, we see a bit of a bright spot there where I think Polygon will remain as a great option for these NFT NFT games, play to earn games, because E2.0 will never be as fast as Polygon. So that right way is is kind of a, a one tick box that I like to see for Polygon. Yeah, there's a lot of metaverse projects being built on Polygon. Um, you know, you still need, you, you need the Matic token for all the transactions as well. So there's still that utility of the token. Um, you know, but speaking to people adopt like companies and projects adopting Polygon and making it their you know their their home base, so to speak. You have the the head of YouTube gaming join the team recently, which is massive. Um, you have Instagram launching NFTs on Polygon. That's a huge one. Which is massive. This one's huge. Stripe. Stripe launches global payouts using Polygon. Um, you have Adidas NFTs on Polygon. So you have this really huge institutional adoption of this network specifically. And I think they're using it because it is a side chain to Ethereum. So they're still getting the security, but they're getting the, the security of Ethereum, but they're receiving the, the, fast, the fast transactions and the cheap, the cheap transactions through Polygon. Yeah, I mean, I think when you go back and you look at that list of partnerships that you just mentioned, they're not really, I don't think they're gonna go away. So I think Polygon's done enough up until this point to secure at least when you look at it from that angle. There's a few other things that we'll get into later in the episode that might have another another point of view, but from partnerships and potential projects, there's 19,000 dApps building with Polygon right now. 19,000. So they've got a foothold in the industry, and that is because they've been around for a while. They've gone through some ups and downs. Um, did you read about what happened in 2019 with the Matic token? What happened there? It crashed around 70 to 75% within a very short period of time. It was like the first Luna collapse. Right. Everyone was calling it Ponzi scam, pump and dump, but they recovered. And that to me shows the resilience of the team to recover from that. They didn't, you know, do a fork and do, you know, Luna, Luna 17.0. They stuck with the project after everyone called it a pump and dump because the, the chart literally looks like a pump and dump, like a, like a rug pull right. up forever. And then one oh. massive red down to basically zero. And the team stuck with the project and built it back up to now be a top 20 project in this bull run. Kudos. So that's something I, I love that you brought up the team because that's some notes I had here and what I, I really like the way they handle certain situations that could be a lot worse. So there's two that really caught my eye. Uh, in January 2021, their proof of stake gas fees spiked so hard. And obviously they're being used to keep the gas fees really low. What they determined was it was a game on the network that was flooded with bots. What they do, they just removed it. You know, they got it off the network. I love the way they just tackled the problem. Another one that happened was when they had an integration with Uniswap. And there was a bug that they found. It was 
$24 billion were at stake, instead of publicizing it, they kept everything under wraps, didn't say a thing. <clears throat> Only $2 million was stolen but I, from a hacker. But I do love the way the fact, I love the fact that they didn't publicize it. You know, you see some of these other ones where, oh, there's a hack. And then once that comes out, all of a sudden you have a ton of other hackers attacking it, right? Right. I just really like the way they handled these three situations with, you know, the, the uh, what appeared to be a rug pull. Yeah. You know, the gas fee spike and the hack. Like, they handle things pretty well. Right. So we have a team that's going through some ups and downs, shown the resiliency, shown their commitment to the project, made a lot of good decisions under fire, which is not an easy thing to do for a team. No. You've got a project that is partnered with Instagram, as you said, Atari, Adidas, Prada. They're backed by Coinbase Ventures and Binance Labs as well. They basically have everyone behind them. Partnerships are great. There's a few things you wanted to mention about the tokenomics of the project, right? That bear, that bear mentioning. Yeah, so because so far, I mean, it's, what's great is 80% of the tokens have been distributed. That's fantastic. Yep. However, there has been some selling from the Polygon Foundation, which is not great. You don't want to see that. You'd like to see them holding on. They got in at an early price of two cents. So they're up huge no matter what. Yeah. Right? No matter what happens here. <clears throat> they still have... So they're going to, they do have a, it's capped at 10 billion tokens, I believe it is. They still have another 2 billion to come out. But those tokens are used to reward the validators on the, and secure the network. Once those tokens run out in the next two to three years, what is the incentive to consi- to continue validating the, the network? Right. So that's where we can potentially run into some issues. I mean, Two to three years is a long way out. You don't know how technology is going to change. You don't know how the crypto space is going to change. You don't know how Ethereum 2.0 is still going to require uh, Polygon or not. So that is just like one of the few things I would kind of be weary of. And that's, you know, the validators. Right. Okay. I mean, it's, it's important to always look into these tokenomics things. That's why we made that standalone episode. If you haven't seen that tokenomics episode, go watch it. I think it's one of our best and you will learn a ton from it. And if you like this episode, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It'll help us out a lot. But going back to the future of Ethereum and the future of Ethereum 2.0, you know, we're looking at something that a lot of people say could flip Bitcoin in the future, could be basically the future of crypto. You know, Ethereum has a massive head start on all the other layer one blockchains. And we talk about these kind of things on the show all the time. It's the tide that rises all boats. So if Ethereum goes mass adoption and, you know, you have everyone from kids to parents to people from third world, first world countries. Everyone is using Ethereum in some way, shape, or form. And you have Polygon, which is the number one layer two side chain. If Ethereum becomes more popular, I think by association, Polygon will become more popular too. So if you're looking at plays that aren't Ethereum but are related to Ethereum, then I think Polygon potentially has some merit as something that will live on past the merge due to the fact that, as we said before, Ethereum will never be as fast or as cheap as Polygon. And if you're a game developer, if you're a metaverse developer, you have an easy choice. Are you going to pay a cent for a gas fee or a 0.000001 of a cent? You know, if you're planning on doing billions of transactions, which a lot of these projects are, that is a huge difference in financial cost. So Polygon is going to win out every time. Absolutely. And they're doing a lot of really neat things uh, in the upcoming year to two. So... <clears throat> They're switching to, car- they're car- currently carbon neutral. They're going carbon negative uh, this year. I like it. Which is huge because there's this whole ESG movement and all that that's going on right now. Um, I know Polygon and the Reddit co-founder launched this $200 million Web3 social media initiative with, uh, what's his name? Alex, Excel- Exari- what's his name? Al- Alex Zarian, something or other. The Reddit co-founder. Oh, yeah. Uh, Alexis Ohanian. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, they also brought in this, it's called Opera Browser, which has 80 million users that they partner with. So they're, they're doing a lot of like really neat things. They're doing custom NFT drops in collaboration with, with DraftKings. Oh, yeah, cool. So they just have so many really cool things in the next year or so that just makes this, I think, a really... At first, before this... Okay, before we started this podcast, I wasn't a big fan of Polygon. Right. You know, I'm just like, yeah, you know, I think there's just so many other projects. They have a lot of competition. You know, even from their ethereum internet of blockchains you you have they're also competing with polka dot as well but polka dot is able to work with all blockchains whereas polygon is only ethereum so i guess they run to some competition there there's also some other layer twos like loop ring for example which also uses 
uh, ZK rollups. So there's some competition in the space, but I just see how well the team's managing things and seeing the massive partnerships that are occurring. That's the beauty about our the truth of X series that we run right now, because even if you might be bearish on a certain crypto or I might be bullish or you as the viewer don't know, or maybe you have a strong, a strong feeling about a crypto. When you watch these truth about crypto episodes that we do, and if you like this, we're going to keep doing these. We're going to get to find the truth about every single main project, all the top 100s, all the top 200s eventually. You never really know after you really do the deep dive or we present the facts for you, whether your opinion might shift. And as an investor, you can't be just tied to a, a viewpoint on any sort of stock or crypto. You can't just be like, I love this company and I will never change my mind. You have to be open-minded when presented with facts that may be against what you thought to be smart enough to switch your your bullish or bearish point of view, right? So I think that's that's why we started this series and I think it's going to it's it's going to continue to educate not only us but the viewers moving forward, yeah, right? Yeah, because before we, before we start this podcast, this episode specifically, we we're going to do like a good cop bad cop. Yeah. And I was going to say why I I dislike Polygon. And after digging into it and doing more and more and more research on it, you start to realize like, you know what? I see the use case here and I see how how the adoption is occurring. Tokenomics look pretty good. Yep. You know, and you're like, okay, I'm you know, I'm switching, I'm switching over a little bit, you know? For sure. There's one final thing I want to say about Polygon, which I found this out and and it made me more bullish on Polygon than I have really ever been before. Vitalik Buterin himself said that layer twos will be critical for the success of Ethereum even after the merge and 2.0 are complete. And Polygon is the king of layer twos for Ethereum. So if you if you're bullish on Ethereum, I think you have to be bullish on Polygon. So for me, Polygon would be a good tier one altcoin to load up on the incoming bear market. Absolutely. And they have they still have a ton of other scaling solutions coming out on Polygon. They currently have Polygon POS, Polygon Hermes. And they just released Polygon Edge. They have another one in Testnet and four other scaling solutions to come out, which will all help Ethereum. I like it. Polygon gets the tick from me. Yeah, you know, I could definitely see myself dollar cost averaging once, uh, you know, the crypto market kind of sorts itself out. The Fed kind of gets things on, under wraps. I like it because, you know, a lot of these other like top 20, top 30, top 40 projects that are maybe layer ones, you know, I don't know, Avalanche and your protocol, we, we like in some of them. But they're pre-adoption, so you never really know if they're going to get that adoption. Ethereum already has that adoption, and Polygon is tied to it. So in that way, it's, you know, crypto is obviously risky, but in that way, it's a little bit less risky than some of the layer ones that are pre-adoption that you're betting will get adoption, that have huge market caps like Polygon. Polygon's tied its, its you know, yeah, it's, it's tied same, to yeah. the great ship. So, <laughs> so for me, I think I'm going to start looking at Polygon a little bit more than normal. So am I. Absolutely. Yeah, for yep. sure. I like it. Sweet. Well, hey, look. Uh, if you guys like this episode, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and tune into the next episode. Ooh, that one's going to be a banger. All views expressed by speakers on the Bean Pod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the Bean Pod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.